Happy New Year, everyone. If you're like most people, you're already looking forward to what the New Year will bring, making resolutions and big plans for the future. But if you're like me, you're already pining for the good old days. Time for a short history lesson. To start off, let's go way back. That's right, September 23rd of 1889. Fusajiro Yamauchi opened Nintendo for business, producing and marketing Hanafuda, Japanese playing cards. Handmade from the bark of mulberry trees, the cards came in decks of 48. For the majority of its life, Nintendo existed solely as a Hanafuda company. Things start to get interesting when, in 1948, Hiroshi Yamauchi, the great-grandson of Fusajiro, inherits the company. Hiroshi was keen on expanding Nintendo's business operation, having already tried his hand at a taxi company and a love hotel. He signed deals with Disney to put familiar faces on cards, and they were the first Japanese company to produce cards made of plastic. Doesn't sound too hot now, but it was a big deal back then. Unfortunately, despite forays into toy making, Nintendo's stock dropped dramatically after the Tokyo Olympics. Nintendo wasn't doing so well, until one day in 1970, Yamauchi saw Gunpei Yokoi, a maintenance engineer at one of Nintendo's Hanafuda manufacturing plants. He was playing with an extendable arm that he'd invented for fun. Impressed, Yamauchi immediately ordered Yokoi to develop it into a mass-market toy. The Ultra Hand went on to great success, selling 1.2 million units. Naturally, Yokoi was promoted to product development, where he invented several other toys, including the 10 billion barrel, a Rubik's Cube-like puzzle, the Ultra Machine, which shot baseballs, and a love tester. In this same year, one Shigeru Miyamoto was hired by Nintendo, with Yokoi playing mentor in Nintendo's R&D division. Around this time, Yokoi was busy creating the Nintendo Beam Gun games, the precursor to the NES Zapper with Sharp Electronics. And when Nintendo started making video games, it was Gunpei Yokoi that led the way. And the games he invented, before even Donkey Kong was a sparkle in Miyamoto's eyes, are the focus of this retro review. The Game & Watch series was a line of handheld electronic games invented by Gunpei Yokoi from 1980 to 1991. In addition to its clock and alarm functions, each unit was a standalone game that could be played on a simple LCD screen. Due to the limitations of LCD technology at the time, the animation was very simple, so by nature the object of each game is a repetitive, goal-oriented task. To add challenge and fun factor, the internal timekeeping mechanism could increase the speed of the game as points were scored. Every 100 points, the game resets to a slower tempo. The rules of each game are unique, with one exception. You can only miss three times, after which the game is over. This simple but addictive formula would provide fertile ground for Nintendo's designers, who came up with approximately 59 versions. Most of them had one D-pad on the left-hand side, and usually one, sometimes two, buttons on the right. The D-pad was the solution to the problem of putting a bulky joystick onto such a small device. Several different models were manufactured, with some consoles having two screens and a clamshell design exactly like the DS, or even multiple input devices for two players to compete. Okay, so what are these games all about? Well, let's take a look at them in the order they were released. To do so, I'll be showing you the versions of the games that have been released in a series called Game & Watch Gallery, which were made for the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance systems. Uh, this was the very first Game & Watch ever made, pretty simple looking. In Game B, there's actually three balls that you have to juggle. Uh, if you miss even a single time, it's game over, so it is deceptively challenging. In Flagman, it's a game of Simon Says. He shows you a bunch of numbers that you have to repeat back to him. Uh, every round he adds a number, so it does get pretty tough once you get up into the uh, double digits. In Vermin, there's these moles trying to uh, come and eat your vegetables in your garden, so you gotta smack them. Uh, you don't actually have to press a button to whack them, you just have to line them up with the incoming moles. Fire, this one's a favorite of mine. You basically, you're trying to save these people from a burning building by bouncing them into a waiting ambulance. Uh, it gets pretty tricky when there's a lot of people on screen at once. Judge is a game of war. Whoever has the higher number uh, smacks his opponent on the head. If you have a lower number, you have to dodge out of the way. And if they both have the same number, whoever hits the other person first wins. Manhole, basically there's these holes in the sewer. Uh, area in this thoroughfare, so you have to fill in the gaps for the people that are walking, otherwise uh, they'll fall in. Helmet, uh, this one you have to rush across, apparently there was an explosion at a Home Depot or something, there's uh, all these appliances falling in the sky, you can only actually escape if the door is open on the other side. 
In Lion, it appears that uh, someone, possibly PETA representatives, have tried to free these lions, so you have to push them back into the cage. This one's pretty simple, you just gotta collect the people as they come out of the helicopter. Uh, don't let them take a dip in the drink as there's a rather hungry shark down there waiting to eat them. In Octopus, you're after the pirate gold on, on the seafloor there, but there's a very greedy octopus, and if even the tip of his tentacle touches you, you're through. Here's a chef who likes to entertain uh, his guests by juggling the ingredients of a recipe. And he's got a little cat there that adds a bit of randomness by grabbing a piece every now and then. In egg, you basically just have to collect the eggs as, uh, as the hens lay them there. Uh, kind of a tricky timing though, if you, if, if you let one fall, that's a mess. In Turtle Bridge, you have to move precious supplies from one side of the river to the other, and your only support are these turtles who will dive underwater when a fish gets close, so you have to be i yeah, got to be careful. In Fire Attack, uh, you're apparently uh, an unwelcome guest on native soil, perhaps uh, an ancient burial ground, and of course they're trying to smoke you out, so you got to defend the fort. Oil Panic, this is another favorite of mine. Uh, you're at a gas station, and it's leaking, so you have to collect the oil, and uh, if you accidentally spill some, that's a miss. Here's Donkey Kong, of course, uh, based on the arcade game. You gotta jump over the barrels or dodge them, and at the end you f uh, flip a switch, and then you have to go and, and grab onto the hook there. Now that we've looked at some of the games, let's take a short break. There's an interesting story about them I want to tell you. After all, it takes a certain kind of genius to look at the LCD screen and timekeeping functions of a Timex and invent video games from it. But that's exactly what Gunpei Yokoi did. How on earth did he dream it up? The legend goes, Yokoi was traveling home from a long day of work on the bullet train one evening and saw a bored businessman playing with an LCD calculator by pressing the buttons. At that moment, the idea for a mini gaming machine tailored for killing time dawned on him. And thus the Game & Watch games were born. They would go on to sell approximately 40 million units. Okay, back with more games. Uh, here's Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, similar to the arcade game, you can jump onto the vines while avoiding enemies, and you gotta collect a key to free Donkey Kong from Mario. This greenhouse, another favorite of mine, you gotta watch both the top and bottom screen as insects come and try to eat the plants that you're growing in uh, this grow op. There's Donkey Kong 2, this one plays uh, like levels 3 and 4 from that arcade. You gotta dodge the sparks while collecting the keys. Climb up the rope, avoiding the birds to free Donkey Kong. Here the Mario Bros are working in this factory. Uh, you gotta keep the items on the conveyor belt, so you really gotta coordinate both the left and right hand side of the screen. Quite a mind bender. Here Mario's working in a cement factory and these globs might overfill the container so you have to go up and down this very perilous elevator shaft in order to fill up the awaiting cement trucks. Here's a rain shower, you gotta keep your laundry dry despite the rainstorm. And in game B every now and then these little pesky crows will come and tug on the lines to mess up your plans. In Lifeboat, uh, Carnival Cruise Line is apparently burning and going down, and of course there's shark infested waters, so you gotta rescue the people. In Mario's Bombs Away, you're trying to uh, bring this bomb into the enemy lines, and of course they're trying to sabotage that by lighting it on the top and bottom. In Spitball Sparky, you're playing a game of Arkanoid or Breakout, you gotta destroy the ball, or destroy the blocks rather, while keeping the ball in play. Here's a, a two-player game, boxing. Pretty primitive, you can punch uh, kind of an up and down punch, you can dodge, uh, but pretty basic. Basically it's urban champion all over again. Here's uh, Donkey Kong 3, a little bit of a different setup than the arcade. You gotta fill up your spray bottle and uh, keep the bees on your opponent's side of the screen. In Tropical Fish, these fish are jumping out of the tank, so you gotta move them uh, from one tank to the other. Of course, if you drop one, uh, your pet cat gets a meal. Here, uh, fans of Ice Climber will, will recognize this one. You gotta 
bash your way through the ice and climb to the top of the stage where you jump onto a flying albatross. Here's Bomb Sweeper. It's uh, basically a maze game. You have different bombs uh, in these different levels here that you have to defuse and you have to make your way through the maze. In Safe Buster, there's a criminal trying to crack open a safe down there for the gold bullion, so you have to defuse the bombs by dropping them off. Here's a pretty basic version of Zelda. It kind of looks like Zelda 2. Uh, in its side-scroller kind of view, you can get uh, a tomahawk and a map and some water of life, and at the end you fight a dragon. Now, gaming enthusiasts will notice that uh, these are the games that haven't been released in a Game & Watch collection. So these are just waiting to be released, and uh, many of them are actually dual-screen games, so they'd be perfect for the DS. In Japan, Nintendo's already released a Game & Watch collection on DS, but it only features three games, and they're games that we've already wow, seen. So maybe we should email Nintendo and tell them we want Game & Watch collection on DS. Wow, Please and thank you.